Francesco Tagliente from INF and Paris, uh, from the same institute of uh, the previous talker, and uh, I will talk about the um, importance of the neutron data for uh, astrophysics. So I will go, uh, this one are the, the, the arguments that I will treat, so I will give a short introduction about astrophysics. I will talk about the stellar revolution, the S and R processes, and uh, okay, neutron in the lab in this case. I will have some similar slide that uh, my colleague had before, so it is the problem to be the second. I was always second in the life, I was a second child, so <laughs> I was always uh, suffering this uh, situation. Okay, I will uh, talk about uh, the analysis technique, the astrophysical implication, and uh, the conclusion. So, uh, astrophysics is a, 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 a relatively new, uh, new. so in, still in the 50s, there was a big debate. Uh, about the uh, when and where the nuclear synthesis took place. So, um, it's, it's still in the 50s, it was uh, uh, Gamma was proposing that the nuclear synthesis was uh, related to some event of the uh, um, of the origin of the universe. So, it was very close to the, the Big Bang time. While in the same period, uh, oil was uh, uh, um, proposing that uh, the uh, fabric of the elements, so the nuclear synthesis, was taking place in the stars. There was no evidence, which was, was the fabric of the elements, and uh, only in the 52 there was uh, uh, the, let's say, the smoking gun. So the, 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 um, the spectral line of technetium were observed in the, some red giant. Now, uh, star. now the, the technetium, technetium is a, a special isotope. It doesn't exist on the Earth because it is not stable, and uh, um, isotopes with the longest lifetime are the 97 and uh, 97, 98, which have 2.6 and 4.2 million years. So they get, they, they are, uh, their uh, life is much shorter than age of the herd and is also shorter than age of the red giant. So this one was the evidence that the star, uh, the, the, the nuclear synthesis, the nuclear synthesis happens in the stars. So since that moment. <coughs> Uh, we knew that uh, the majority of the chemical elements in the universe are produced through the nuclear reactors, uh, nuclear reaction in the hot interior of the star. So this one was the, uh, the this paper was the milestone of the astrophys nuclear astrophysics. And uh, in '84, the uh, uh, Polar was uh, honored by the Nobel Prize, and this one is the <coughs> the uh, Nobel lecture that was given. Sorry, in '83, I mean, mistake. Uh, in 83, and uh, this one was the Nobel lecture that you can find on science in 1984. And um, <coughs> so, now, since then, we know that uh, the elements are made in the, in the star. So, when, uh, uh, how we can know the, 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 the abundances of the elements? So, fundamentally, there are two sources of information. They are independent uh, sources of information, and uh, these are the, 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 the spectrum of the uh, photosphere, of the, uh, the sun, and, uh, and also the, uh, some special kind of meteorites. The, it is uh, uh, important to note that uh, the abundances from these two independent uh, sources are in a remarkable agreement between them, so better than 10%. So, <coughs> the, uh, so we, have, uh, we can talk about solar ab uh, um, abundances. And uh, what we uh, notice when we go to plot the abundances uh, uh, against the uh, uh, mass number is that these element, the abundance of these elements, are not spread casually in this plot, but they have, uh, they follow some trend. So there are peaks and dips, and these uh, uh, dips and peaks give us uh, uh, some important information about the stellar evolution, or better, the stellar evolution can explain this uh, uh, particular uh, um, plot. So let's talk about the stellar evolution. The best way to represent the stellar evolution is just to plot the long luminosity of the star in function of the surface temperature of the star. Just pay attention that you go from right to left, so from low temperature to high temperature, and yet from low luminosity up to uh, high luminosity. So in the <coughs> here, in the bottom right, you have the cool and faint star. Here you have the cool and bright star, hot and bright star and the hot dim star, our sun is here. Another important feature when you go to make this plot is that the, the stars are not spread around. Also here, there is a trend. So you see that observing 
a system of star, here are 25,000 star, uh, you see that uh, most of them are on this line that goes from the uh, bright and hot corner to the uh, um, cool and uh, dim uh, corner. And also there are some other area. So there is a trend, so it is important to explain why the star <laughs> prefer to stay in some in, in, in certain area and are not spread around. So in order to understand that, in order the most important parameter of the star is the mass. So you <coughs> you see here that uh, they go. There is also written the, the, the um, okay. The, the bigger is the mass, higher stays in this uh, in, uh, in this uh, position. So the initial uh, mass of the star and the 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 the, the, um, the life of the star is uh, determined by its initial mass. So we have here. Another example, you let the mass goes in this way. And so you have the small star, they have quite long life, and they, the life is almost <coughs> very quiet. And uh, while they have a big star that go through supernova with a big explosion, the, uh, most of the time the, the stars spend in this uh, sequence, that is the main sequence, the, what we saw before, where <coughs> there was the most populated area. And that is, uh, there is this, uh, is connected to, to the mass from this way. So, Heavier is the mass, faster and shorter, sorry, is its life. And uh, now, how, uh, now in the future, in the following, I will discuss about a bit uh, the, the difference in, uh, of, these, uh, uh, the, the, of the stellar evolution of the different mass. But another important thing is that how is the distribution of the star? Always observing a group of stars, what we see is that uh, there are much more small stars in this range of mass and than heavy stars. Um, and uh, so, and also here, okay, so we will we'll, now we'll talk about this mass range. We have uh, the first in this range. That, okay, was uh, just uh, if we go here is in this part. So this part um, are not really star. The, uh, the the mass is not enough to start uh, burning the hydrogen. So the but they are able to burn the the deuterium. So it is why they are different from the uh, biggest planet. We are talking about always about solar masses that where well, the uh, solar mass is the one. So this one are not a real star, but they can burn the, the deuterium and uh, and um, but they are not considered considered real uh, real star. The other the real star start from this point from when the mass is in this in this range. These one are called red dwarf, and uh, they are able to start burning the the um, Hydrogen, in this case, the star uh, uh, create helium, but the mass is not enough to start burning the helium, and the core of the star became an electron degenerate uh, gas. So the, this gas is able to keep uh, to contrast the, the gravity, and so the star is in, in equilibrium and <coughs> slowly, slowly dies. But this kind of star have very long life, like about 10 to 12 years. And here is just to a sketch. Here is our sun. This one is a red dwarf, and this one. Is at the brown dark that are these kind of uh, uh, objects. The most important stars are the one in this range, between 0, 5, and 3 solar masses. These ones are a little bit less for what I'm going to say, but always are important to study their evolution, but I will not spend much time on this. And all the important masses are the very heavy, heavy star. So I will give you some des uh, the description of this mass more in detail. This one. The, uh, the star with mass, with initial mass included between 0, 5 and 3 solar masses are much more complicated than one week. So before, already, <coughs> they, can, uh, they, they, bar, uh, they are able to burn hydrogen, and after, when the uh, hydrogen is exhausted, to, they are able to start the, uh, the helium burning. They cannot go further. They cannot burn uh, carbon and oxygen. But it is important to see when they, the, depending on the mass, they have different ways to produce energy, so to, to, to burn the hydrogen. <coughs> If the mass is lower than 1.5 solar masses, they, the, the, the fusion goes through the PP chain, while if it is bigger than 1.5, it goes through the CNO cycle. This difference makes also uh, change completely the, 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 um, the structure of the star, and the way that it is transferred out from the star is different. So we saw that for mass between 0 0.5 and 1.5, the core is uh, radioactive, while the convective envelope is, uh, uh, is, co is convective and in the end for one point for mass uh, for star with mass bigger than 1.5 solar masses is, is the opposite. I will talk 
longer about this kind of star because they're very important for the nucleosynthesis. Other stars are these uh, uh, the nucleosynthesis of the heavy element. Uh, are these other stars in this mass range and uh, they don't contribute too much to the uh, heavy element, so we'll not spend much time they just to see that the super HB star uh, are able to go to, to, yeah, to a further stage after the helium, so they can, they can start burning carbon. So, so far, with this, in this mass range between 0, 0,5 and 11 uh, uh, solar masses, we have that, uh, um, three stages of burning. We can have, we can have the hydrogen, helium, and carbon. Now we go to the heaviest one, so the, mass, the, 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 the star with the uh, initial mass bigger than 11 uh, solar masses, and they um, can have other three stages of burning. And so after the carbon, they uh, can uh, fuse the uh, neon, they can uh, oxygen, and uh, uh, silicon. So this one is the last stage. After this stage, you have the core that is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, rich of iron, and this also this one is a gas, like electron gas that gen uh, generates. So there is equilibrium between this, the pressure of this gas and, uh, uh, and the gravity. The problem is that uh, the, the problem, okay. The 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 the, but, uh, the, the, the energy is given by, uh, by this uh, uh, layer of other material that is uh, uh, that the shell uh, around around the core. So they are still producing material and then uh, um, ashes. Let's say that go in the in in the core. So the core becomes bigger and bigger. In one point, the uh, the, the pressure of the electron gas is not able anymore. To, um, to contrast the gravity, and there is a, so in the, the, the star starts to collapse, <coughs> and starts a contraction by the, 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 the gravity. So at this point, the density starts to increase, and when the, 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 the density of the core becomes at the same level of the nuclear density, we have that the nuclei and the uh, free nuclear starts feeling the repulsive part of the nuclear force. At this point, the potential uh, uh, nuclear acts like uh, a stiff spring and there is an explosion. This one is a supernova. So we have that the material inside the core is uh, rebounded and while it is going outward, it encounters the material that is following from the, the other shell. So this uh, uh, material is exploding is essentially neutron and protons. Uh, um, is, let's say it's bombarding the, the, the ashes created on the, other, uh, on the other material. So there is a kind of shock waves. So the, 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 the last part of the, the, is the, the last part of the star that, okay, after uh, dies and dies, okay, as a different um, evolution can become a neutron star or a black hole. But uh, it is, uh, uh, this, uh, this star, they, they, they last quite uh, short if you compare to our sun or the, or with the star with the lower mass. And, uh, but it is funny that to see that for this one is the evolution in the Earth's Planck uh, diagram. And you see that for lower, for mass with the, for star with the lower mass, the life is almost complicated. So they have many, uh, the line is almost complicated. While for this one, it is almost straight. Although they have a complicated life. Um, so, okay, now we know uh, something about the star evolution. Let's say what we can uh, obtain from the, 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 this, uh, this plot of the um, abundances. So we know that the, the first part, <coughs> the helium and hydrogen, that, constitutes the, that is the 19% of the, 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 all the, ma the material around all the, the, the abundances in the universe is made by uh, hydrogen and helium, and uh, it comes from the Big Bang. After uh, we have the, okay, this gap, that is the, uh, the gap of beryllium, lithium, and borum. And these other elements, they come from the different stage of the uh, fusion in the star. So the, we have the alpha nuclei. And in the end, we have the iron peak that comes from the last stage of the fusion, so the, the, the silicon uh, burning. And after this, we cannot go by fusion because, okay, for the binding energy in this point, it doesn't increase anymore, but it goes down. So you need energy in order to fuse and not, uh, so you don't have any energy <coughs> to spend in the, in the star. So at this point, we have more than 99% of the, the, um, the, the elements. Therefore, so we, there are still these 
small part, this is 1%, cannot be explained by fusion. So how they are created, this material, so the, this element, sorry, this is one are created by neutron capture. And the, the fact that they uh, the, the are neutron, it's evident from this peak, always a peak that helps us to explain uh, the physics. So these peaks are just around the neutron magic nuclei. And the fact that there are two peaks, it means that there are two different process of neutron capture. So these processes are called R process and S process. And so we can say that all the elements ever the ion are the results of neutron capture processes. Okay, now I will talk about the neutron capture processes. So we saw that there are two processes and uh, um, essentially there is the S process with a uh, lifetime of 10 to the 4 years with, uh, and it requires neutron density about 10 to the 8 neutron per uh, uh, cube centimeter. After we have the R process, that it happens during the supernova explosion, and you see the lifetime is much shorter, but the density of the neutron is much higher. And between this process, there is a competitor, there is uh, the, the beta decay, which lifetime is a, is a few hours, and sometimes can be in competition, especially with the S process. How, we have, uh, how the S process proceeds? So we have this um, seed nuclei, the one that are created in the, uh, uh, by fusion in the star, and they, are, they can be bombarded or decayed uh, by neutron in some way, so they capture this, ne uh, this neutron, became heavier and heavier. In one point, the, you have the beta decay, and so you create a new species. And it goes, the, the, the path goes in this way, creating all the elements that go from the iron to the lead. And they, you create this element, in this beta stability valley. About the, uh, the, the R process, it goes in different way. It acts in the supernova, in the explosion of supernova, you have loss of a neutron that the density is quite high, and so really, okay. so at this moment, when the star is exploding, we have 1.5 giga Kelvin, so all the elements became strongly full, uh, really, uh, they are rich of neutrons, and after, okay, they are unstable, and they start to decay. They have a chain of decay, still they reach the beta valley stability. So we have that the, the, uh, most of these uh, isotopes, isotopes created by our process are the one close to the neutron drip line. So yeah, the process is stopped. Uh, it's important also to note that, uh, okay, Behind the iron peak, the elements are created by S and R process. So we have 50% of the, 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 the contribute these two processes almost equally. Uh, but it's important to note that, that there are some isotopes that is only R isotope and some that is only S. Uh, are, they are very important in order to modeling the star evolution and modeling, especially this phase of the uh, nucleosy nucleosynthesis. In this case, you see that these two osmium are S only because are shielded by the rain 187. So from what, uh, what, which, what information we can have from this kind of isotope, especially by the S. I will talk more about the S process than R process because it is uh, the one that easily can be um, described in the laboratories because uh, first of all, we have that the, uh, the daughter nuclei is very related to the parents. It is not the same for the R process. <coughs> and also, uh, um, you easily, so we will see in the, the future that the, um, you can make this, the, the, the flux of neutron is possible to have in the, in the lab, and, is, uh, and the, the, the cross section has a big influence on the, on the full path uh, the, of the, the S process. So, in the case of the, we, are, we have the plot of the uh, cross section for the abundances for only S isotopes. And so you here see that, that there is a kind of trend. And uh, uh, there is, okay, the, the, the value of this uh, the sigma by n can change over a factor 100, but the nice thing is that you see in these two areas, between the uh, neutron magic uh, nuclei, you have almost a constant area. In this case, we talk about the local equilibrium, where you have that the cross-section for the abundances is a, a, constant, is a constant. It is a, almost logic, because if you think that if you have a small cross-section, of course, this uh, nuclei doesn't accept to capture other neutrons, so it accumulates. If the cross-section is bigger, it, 
easy to capture, and so the abundance is definitely smaller. And so it is, it is uh, uh, logic. And um, so the idea, so from here, you can see that, uh, um, of course, the nucleosynthesis of the element heavier than iron cannot come only from one exp uh, explosion. So cannot come only from one star, just because you have this kind of exponential uh, uh, trend. So it means that uh, to obtain this material, the, 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 um, these elements, they have to go through different generation of the star, or three, yeah, uh, uh, generation of the star. So the, the idea was to describe all this point uh, by an exponential uh, using a few parameters, just the fraction of nuclear seeds and the time of uh, exposure. So this one was a big success in the 90, that were, were uh, okay, uh, okay, this is, uh, the, the, this is the only written that F is the fraction of the seeds nuclei and the, 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 the uh, tau is the neutron exposure. So in the 90, there was a big success by uh, Kepler. He was able to uh, fit, with the, uh, fit this data using the cross-section and the abundances available in that time. So what he got was that there are essentially two uh, uh, areas. There is this one, is the blue one is the main component. And it can be described with the two parameters, with a set of parameters. Uh, and, uh, um, and there is this part, the, in black one, that is called weak component, that is, it is described from this. So it, what does it mean? That to obtain the element that goes from 90 to 205, you need the 6% of uh, nucleus seeds of iron, and they have to, and, and, uh, and they capture like an average of 10 neutrons per time, so for any exposure. <coughs> And okay, and, and, and the, you, uh, you have a much uh, a larger fraction with less time of exposure. Well, you, you have the, this nuclei. So, and another review about this paper is always by uh, uh, Kepler, who was okay, was giving. It, it is important. It's uh, very nice to, to read. It's important if you are interested, in, interested to read. But this simple model doesn't give many information. Okay, now we know that there there are different stellar sites where these. Uh, uh, nuclear synthesis take place, but we don't have the, any information about uh, uh, the flux of the neutron, who is producing the neutron, and the time. So how long we need to to to, to have these uh, um, these uh, elements, and uh, so in the almost in the same time, in the same period, there was a proposed in um, a model. It is called thermal pulse model, where it was explaining in more detail how this nucleosynthesis take place in some stars. So from now, what we know from this model that the, uh, the stellar process are, stellar process sites are the uh, AGB star, the one with the low AGB star with mass, with the initial mass between 1.5 and 3 uh, solar masses. This one is for the uh, main uh, component. And instead for the uh, weak component, we have that uh, the, the factory had this uh, uh, heavy star between uh, 15 and 25 uh, solar masses. And in particular, during the, uh, the helium burning in core um, phase and or in the shell uh, carbon burning. The most attractive between these two is, okay, the, the, um, uh, this one, and I will describe in detail. And here you have two different sources, and I will explain what what happened in, uh, in this kind of star. So this one is a path in the uh, Ersplank-Russell diagram. And uh, so the star that we are interested are in this point, usually. This is the, the mass region that we are interested in for a two solar masses star. And here is when it is the, the main sequence. When the, um, the hydrogen in the core is exhausted, the star is in this position. At this point, the hydrogen is not completely exhausted, but is, uh, there is not any more in the core. So the core is uh, helium rich. And um, so the temperature is not enough to start the helium burning, and the star starts to contract. But still, there is part of the energy that is given from the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen that is in the shell outside the, the core. But OK, so we see that the star starts to cooled down a bit, but became brighter because, of course, the, 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 the hydrogen shell is burning. At one point, 
when the temperature is enough, so because, okay, the, 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 there is still the contraction for the gravity, and the, center of the, the, temp the, the temperature in the center is increasing. So at one point, we have enough, the temperature is high enough to start the helium burning. And so the, the star is in this position at the moment, and so w um, when, we have, when the, the hydrogen, uh, when the helium is burning, so it starts to, again, um, to become hotter, the star, and it moves in this position, so it, it is a bit less bright, but it is hotter. At this point, the, the helium is exhausted, and the star has an oxygen-carbon core and two shells outside this core. One is the first one, near the, the, the core is the helium, and the one a little bit further is the, uh, the hydrogen. And uh, uh, the, the mass of the star is not enough to start the, the carbon uh, burning, and so the, the you have again the contraction. While uh, you have this contraction, the, the, the temperature increases a bit, and so it, it becomes enough to start again uh, the hydrogen burning in the shell. The energy that is produced, on, it is not enough to stop the, 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 the contraction, but, uh, but in this moment of the start, you have that, uh, uh, the, the, um, okay, it, it starts to produce neutron, but okay, you have still the contraction, the temperature increase, and at this point, at one point, you have the enough um, the temperature is high enough to start the helium burning. When the helium starts on the shell, always when the helium starts burning, there is an explosion. The hydrogen shell is brought far away from the core, so it cools down and switches off completely. The, the hydrogen, the hydrogen burning, and you have the, the helium. The helium, okay, is not um, starts bar burning, but okay, it doesn't stop the, the, the contraction anyway. And uh, after a while, it doesn't have any more. Uh, is um, it's not, not anymore enough to uh, to contrast the the, the, the the gravity, and you have the hydrogen comes back, the hydro the helium switch off, and you have again the helium. So you have this kind of accordion phase of the star that um, have contraction and expansion. In this uh, particular part of the, the, the life of the star, uh, the star the star loses the 50 percent of its mass, and so slowly, slowly, here is okay, um, slowly, slowly it goes to finish like. Uh, white dark. Uh, it's important also uh, to see that uh, it is called, they are called AGB because uh, you see this one, they tend asymptotically to the Bryant, uh, to the giant branch. Uh, so let's see what happened. This, this part is uh, the most important part for the nucleosynthesis of the heavy element. So the star looks like this one. So this one is all the material that it is uh, um, uh, it, it spread from the, from the star. And the real star is this one in the center, so is a, we have the convective envelope. And the star, we say we have this core of uh, carbon oxygen. Here we have the helium burning shell, and here is the hydrogen burning shell. So this one is uh, uh, more, just to see what it is a bit better. But what happened is very important. So during the, hydro, uh, the hydrogen phase, we have that this source, <coughs> there are lots of protons available. So in this source of a neutron is activated. And this, uh, <coughs> so you have the, 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 um, the, the flux of this uh, neutron density it goes like this. This phase lasts almost 100,000 years. After, when the temperature is enough, you have this explosion, uh, and, so, uh, and you have the helium, uh, in the helium burning uh, time, you have the, this other source is activated. In this one, you see as much higher neutron densities, but the time is much shorter. It's around 200, 200 years. And this, uh, these pulses, they are called thermal pulses, they can last between 10, 15, uh, we can have between 10 and 15 of these, uh, 150 of these pulses, depending on the mass of the, the star. So these are the two sources of the neutron. You know, the important thing is that during this explosion, we have the part of the material that is in the core and here is brought up, so this is from the dredge up, so it can refill the carbon here and part of the heavy elements they are synthesized in this phase are brought on by the, the, the solar wind on the, um, far away from the, from the, 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 the core. So it's the, 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 what the halo that you see around the, the star. Okay, now it's finished, the, the, let's say, the theoretical part. Let's go now in the lab. And here in this part, is, I will repeat a bit of uh, just a few things, a few slides of the, 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 um, of the Nicola. 
So, okay, the, you can have a neutron in the lab like already we saw with the thermal reactor or with some more energetic uh, neutron based on this, uh, on this reaction. Nicola was already very detailed on this description. Or by time, in the time of light facility where you have a wide neutron energy spectrum and high energy resolution. The, or, okay, I think I can go very fast. So we have this, uh, uh, there is a different way to produce neutron. One is the, with the photo production and the, 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 um, the facility that use this technique are uh, Orela, uh, Galena, and RPI. Okay, Orela, lately, uh, I think, yeah, it's it not uh, so effective. And uh, while the spallation, you have that the neutron are ejected from heavy target due to, to, to um, charge particle impinging on this target facility that use this technique are end off lungs and the easiest. The time oh, you already see this one, so, so this one, so you can um, calculate the energy from the time of flight. And uh, one of the things is important uh, for, the, the, for the resolution that, uh, is the, the, the flight path. So longer is the flight path, better is the resolution, but longer is the flight path, the smaller is the neutron flux, so you have to find a, a compromise between these two uh, needs. And, uh, okay, this one is in top. You already saw this one before, so I don't need to show you. And this one is Galena. You see all these ones are the, 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 the flight path of, the, of Galena. I think you have a better description later by the, the people from Galena. And the most important thing is that they have nine uh, flight paths, and they can... Uh, make different kind of measurement. You see here the list of measurements that they can uh, can make. Uh, about flux, we used to read that uh, for the integrated flux, uh, NTOF is lower than the other facility. Also, we have to think that uh, this uh, flux is at 185 meters. While we go uh, on a instantaneous neutron flux is uh, uh, comparable to Langs, but uh, Langs is a 20 meter, and we are always, uh, the NTOF is 20, uh, 185 meters. And this one is very important when you are measuring uh, radioactive samples that are also important for the astrophysics. Uh, another important thing that was talking about Nicola in the previous talk was about the resolution. And uh, usually when you have a neutron, it can, go, it can escape directly or you can have a path inside the, 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 the um, um, spallation target. So you, what you have is you have the uh, geometrical length plus the path inside of the, the sample. So what can happen is, okay, you have to take account is LM because you can have neutron that arrives in the same time, but they have originally different energy. So in this case, <coughs> talk about resolution, and in order to take account of the resolution, you have, okay, this way, so you have that uh, it depends on the energy and in, 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 in this way, so you have to take in account this time off. Uh, what is the effect you see here is the comparison between Galena and Entoff. You see that the effect of the resolution in the Galena is much smaller than one in Entoff. Here you see that the, uh, how it depends on the distance, so in the energy, the, so below, uh, up one, one um, kV. Uh, the, 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 there is a strong influence of the resolution. What is the effect of the resolution? So this one is what oh, you should see, a uh, resonance. This one is uh, the, 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 the broadening due to the <coughs> Doppler effect. And when you consider also the, uh, the resolution, is this one is the, what you really have. So this one is, the, uh, all this effect has to be considered in the data analysis when you make the analysis of the resonances. Uh, what we detect usually sort of for the uh, astrophysical um, needs, you have two different kinds of measurements you can make. One is the capture neutron, so you have, you have the, 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 um, the neutron arriving at the sample, the, the capture, they emit a gamma, so you detect the gamma. And you can have also transmission measurement, where here you measure all the neutrons that are, that doesn't, the neutrons that don't undergo to the um, capture. So, and uh, what Okay, about the neutron capture, yeah, what happens is that uh, a neutron is captured, so you, you have this uh, compound nuclear, and uh, so after um, the, the, um, the compound nuclear stays in some excited uh, level, uh, state, sorry, and uh, so it decays emitting gammas. From detection of the gamma, you have the spectrum of the resonances. And uh, so what uh, we measure, uh, we measure the cross-section of the compound, is that this one is the the formula over here are the, 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 um, 
the meaning of all these uh, symbols. So the spin factor is G, and uh, the gamma is the uh, total width and the neutron width. And the word the total width usually is given by all the uh, exit channels, so by the elastic channel, the capture channel, and the fission. Most of the sample of the, the, the for um, astrophysical interest, for most of the sample, is the uh, gamma f can be neglected. So, if you see a resonance, this one is okay, the meaning of the gamma, this one is the, the highest proportional to the gamma, uh, gamma, gamma, and total gamma, and one is okay, is the energy of the, the resonance. And the total radiative area is connected to these uh, two parameters, the gamma and the gamma, gamma. Another important thing is when you are detecting, you know, so you have different resonance, so there is a definition that we have the resonant region when the your resonance, the gamma resonance, is smaller than the distance between two resonance. And in the resonant region, you have the resolved resonant region when you have that the detection resolution is uh, smaller than this distance, and you have the unresolved resonant, re uh, unresolved resonant region when the detection resolution is bigger. So, the, we will talk the, about the different technique, how you can detect the, the, the gamma. One is a fib, uh, from activation. You, first of all, you uh, bombard the, 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 um, uh, the samples that you want to study, and after you go to detect all the gamma that uh, are produced by this, uh, um, uh, this, this sample. And, uh, okay, it cannot be done for all the samples, because uh, uh, it can be done only for samples that have the... the the A plus one isotope radioactive. Uh, otherwise, it, it is stable, it cannot be done. And okay, there is no time of flight for this. After it, another way to study the neutron capture is by uh, the level population. It is, it is visible with the germanium detector. And uh, the other one, the other technique is the total energy detection, where you detect only one gamma from the cascade. So your detector has such a small efficiency that are able to detect just one. Uh, gamma, uh, gamma per time. In this, ca in this case, you need the weighting function that we'll explain later, and uh, the neutron has to be insensitive. The detector has to be uh, insensitive to the neutron. And typical detector for this kind of uh, uh, detection are the C66 that are used in Galena and, and Toff. Another way is the one that when you detect all the cascade. So in this case, you need a, a, a four pi, um, a four pi detector with high efficiency, <coughs> very high efficiency, and it allows to have a discrimination between capture. And, and fission. Typical detector for this kind of, uh, of uh, uh, spectroscopy are the barium fluoride, and they are used in uh, NTOF. Let's see now what is the yield. I think most of you know. So the yield is just a fraction of uh, instant neutrons that uh, undergoes to uh, an N gamma reaction. So here is the numbers of uh, um, neutron that undergoes to the, this reaction. This one is the total flux, and this one is the efficiency. And the relation between yield and cross-section is written, is reported here. Uh, the important thing is the, um, the efficiency. This one, that, like you see, it depends from the uh, neutron energy, so from the energy of the neutron, and the energy deposited in the detector. So we saw before that uh, uh, one way to detect the neutron was uh, the total energy detection, where you were detecting only one gamma. And so you here you have to pay attention, because, of course, you can detect this gamma, or you can detect this gamma. They have different energies, so the efficiency will be different for the same uh, uh, um, um, neutron. Uh, so what you have to do is just to find a way in order to have this efficiency independent of the deposit energy. So what this, we do that with the, uh, the um, pulse eight weight technique. So just simply, what do you do? You just modify via software your efficiency in order to make your, uh, uh, your efficiency independent from the energy of the single gamma, so independent from the, the, the cascade. You do that making simulation. You just take in mind that you know the energy of the neutron by the time of flight. So you know the energy of the neutron when you detect the gamma. You use the uh, right weight in order to have the efficiency independent from the, 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 the cascade. And the accuracy of this technique is better than 2%. Another important thing that we saw before is the fact that these uh, detectors for the, uh, have to be insensitive to the neutrons. But what can happen, that even if you pay 
attention if you like C66 are almost uh, they don't detect the neutrons but uh, usually what you have is this one so you have a neutron that arrives and the, the gamma is produced and one of the gamma is detected from your uh, C66 but what can happen is so you have this uh, spectra so what can happen is that uh, uh, the neutron is like scattered, and after it's captured by, by the material surrounding the, the, the detector, so and the gamma that is produced by this capture is detected, uh, is confused with the one capture uh, event, and so in this case you have the superposition of these two, the, the elastic with the capture uh, capture um, cross section. So you have to pay attention on the material that is surrounding or the material which your uh, detector are uh, made. So in the case, like in many cases, we have that the, the detector are made in uh, um, carbon fiber, and most of the material that can, uh, um, where the capture can occur is uh, avoided, so it's, uh, it's not, it is not used. Another important thing uh, things that uh, has to pay, uh, some, the experimentalist has to pay attention, uh, has to have to pay attention is the thickness of the, the sample, because as uh, you can see, you can have a, a sample with the, uh, the um, uh, single scattering. Okay, so here you have the, the red one is the, 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 um, the resonance within the, the single scattering. But you can have the, if the sample is too big, you can have multiple scattering. And you can see that the resolution of the resonance gets worse uh, in, 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 in this case. And uh, um, so, the, so just now about the, the, the analysis. So we saw before that. Uh, uh, just because of the instrumental limitation, we have that our resolution gets worse. So we have the Doppler effect and the, 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 um, the resolution of the, uh, the, um, uh, yeah, the get, uh, yeah, get, get worse. So, but the only things, the important things, is that uh, uh, the area of all these res resonance is the same. So the, the area below the resonance is independent of the experimental resolution. And so what is important to study is more than the, 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 the resonance is the, the area. And OK, we saw already before that some relation. This one is the, the, the relation between the, the, the total area and the cross section. This one is the relation between the, um, the for the gamma capture and the, the, and the, um, the, the cross section and the, and the, and the area for the, for the capture. Um, so in the case of the thin sample, we have that for the transmission, we can express the area with this formula. And you pay attention that it's different if you, you use thin and thick sample. In the case of thin sample, from this uh, uh, area, from the uh, area analysis, you can detect, you can have, sorry, detect the, 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 the gamma n. In the case of thick, you have this relation between the area and the, and the gammas. In the case of the uh, capture, in, the, in this case, you have that uh, the, you, I have to use always thin sample, and the relation between the area and the, and the, and the parameters gamma and gamma, gamma n and gamma gamma is um, this one. So it is important to note that if uh, the, for samples where the gamma n is much bigger than the gamma gamma, from the area you can directly calculate the gamma um, the gamma. gamma. And, uh, but in case it is not possible, if you measure only with the capture, what you can have is just this relation where you can calculate this factor that is called kernel, and it can be used for astrophysical um, uh, scope. So, okay, this one are all the techniques that we can uh, use to for uh, calculate the cross section and how we use the cross section for the uh, astrophysics. So, what is important? Uh, so, no, no, no. Sorry. I was uh, uh, for. Uh, um, Another important thing is, is the normalization. So we saw before that uh, um, this efficiency depends on the neutron energy and on the energy that is detected. But also it depends from other, um, other parameters that are difficult to keep under control. And these parameters are like the liquid of the scintillator that is can change with temperature or the distance between the scintillators and the detector that uh, can uh, can change just when somebody uh, changed the, 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 the sample. So to, to um, keep under control, to take into account these, uh, uh, these other factors, one 
use it um, to normalize the measurement. So we, you make a measurement of some standard sample, in this case it's the gold, but you can use also the iron, so there are some uh, samples where are very well known. You use the saturated resonance, and what you do, you calculate the the, the yield for this, uh, for this parameter. Because you know very well this parameter, you make a fit with your theoretical data, and so you, de you determine these two parameters. And so this one is the, norma the, the, the normalization factor that you have to use in order to take in account all, this, the, 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 um, the, the, all these parameters. Okay, now we are, um, so we saw how to calculate the cross-section, which uh, uh, that we know that, okay, the, the, in our case, the area of the, the resonance is more important, so, we, so to normalize, but what we need for astrophysics? The, uh, we know that uh, the, uh, the neutron that, uh, in, that are producing the star are quickly thermalized to the temperature of the star. And then, so what we have to use is uh, the, um, the uh, maximum Boltzmann distribution, and so you have to folder the cross-section that you have from your um, uh, um, sample that you are studying with the maximum average cross-section of the temperature that you are studying. So we saw before from the, uh, in the AGB star that uh, there are different temperatures, so during the carbon-13 uh, uh, neutron source, the temperature is around 8 uh, kV. For the uh, neon uh, neutron source, the temperature is around 23 uh, KV, while in the, um, for the S process in the heavy star, the temperature is around nine, uh, 90 KV. So you see that uh, you need to calculate your uh, uh, maximum average cross section for different uh, Maxwellian, and uh, so what usually you do, you calculate the maximum average cross section in this way using all of the, the, the cross section that were uh, in, the, in the range of folding, your, uh, the, folding your, the cross section that you know with the maximum average. Uh, with the maximum distribution. Okay, so uh, how you can calculate the maximum, the, the maximum average cross-section? So depends on which facility you work. Um, we, so when you use the activation technique, you have these mono -energetic, almost mono-energetic uh, uh, neutrons, but okay, they have this, uh, already this maximum uh, shape um, spectra, and so the data can be directly uh, the, the data you, that you obtain from this facility are already uh, averaged for the maximum uh, distribution. Facilities like this are, uh, okay, uh, usually uh, in the van der Graaffs, there are new facilities like SARAF, France, and Lenos that are in construction, or I think SARAF is already uh, producing data. And uh, so this is a measurement is in two steps. You have the first the activation, and, and the second, okay, you measure. The, the, um, the gammas, uh, the pro is that uh, um, it is a selective method, so there is a good uh, um, ratio between signal and background, and uh, you have a large flux because the sample is just attached to the, the, um, the, the, the different source. The <coughs> problem is that you can use for all the samples, and uh, you also think that uh, uh, you can produce the maximum average cross section only for set energy, which can be 25 or 30 kV. So it is not easy to extrapolate this data to lower or higher energy, so especially for samples that present lots of resonance uh, in uh, the region that we want to study. So it is not so um, straightforward. The other one is with the neutron time of light. We saw that uh, I talked uh, quite a lot, and uh, so here you can determine the, the cross section. Uh, for almost all energy, so you can calculate Maxwell and average for, um, for all uh, energy you need. The, the problem is that uh, um, essentially that you need uh, almost pure sample, while in the previous, when you use the activation, you can use uh, just natural samples, and also that sometimes they have to be quite big. Also, you have here uh, the, 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 the problem of the background, but okay, most of the time it's just the samples, the biggest problem. Uh, and so, and for when you have a, a radioactive isotope, okay, you need a very high flux facility. Okay, now uh, we, um, I will show you, okay, the, the needs for the astrophysics, or the, the, which cross section do we need. So here is the, the almost actual situation about, about accuracy and, uh, uh, and the, the, the mass number. So you see that the accuracy that the, uh, the, the, um, of the cross-section is quite high, for, uh, so it's quite low for uh, most of the, the samples. And the, what is required in astrophysics is uh, an accuracy better than 5% with a safe control of the systematic. So you can see that there is also 
of work, to, uh, lots of work to do. Between these, uh, between these um, elements, uh, there are some that are more important, like the branching point, so this uh, isotope, are isotope where the beta decay is in competition with the uh, uh, S process. After you have the much uh, nuclei at end points, like the, the lead, uh, the seed isotopes are very important to, uh, to know in order to uh, modeling the stellar evolution, and there is some uh, isotope of special interest, like the cross some cross-mochronometer or neutron poison uh, isotope. About the branching point, uh, uh, along the S process, there are 21, this one is a nice paper that talks about the, 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 um, the nuclear physics in the star, and there are, okay, here there are the list of the uh, branching point, there are 21 on the S uh, process path, and uh, before 2001, no one of them was measured. So recently, since the 2001, there are, um, two of them were, were measured, the nickel 63 and the Samari 153, three, three of them were measured this year, but still there are not the results. And uh, the complication of these samples is not the fact that they are radioactive, okay? You see, the hair there is the, 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 life, the lifetime. So for example, for the nickel is 100 year, and for the Samario is uh, uh, 900 uh, here. Uh, the promethium is two, uh, two years, and this one is 1.9. So it's not only the radioactive, but how to obtain these, uh, these samples. It's not easy to find them. And, uh, uh, so this one, and also to, um, to use them in, in facilities. So this one, the, the complication comes just for the, from the, for the samples, how to uh, obtain, obtain them. So uh, I will describe a, a bit the, the samarium. Samarium is uh, very important because uh, he has a, the half-life is 93 years on the laboratory, but it's changed with the temperature. So in the S process site, it can go down till three years. Uh, and uh, so depending on this temperature, you can have and the neutron flux, of course, you can have the test process can go on this path or can go on this other way. So it can feed uh, Europe 151 on Europe 153 in different way. Uh, so it will uh, follow different paths. Uh, path. So um, the branching rate depends on the thermal condition of the star, and uh, it can be used to measure the temperature of the, of the star, of course, once the cross-section is well known. This experiment was done at Entoff in the 2001, and for the first time okay, it was possible to uh, see uh, uh, many, many resonance. And here is just to, here is the background, here is the, the signal, so you can see with this uh, kind of facility what uh, uh, kind of measurement you can make with the, with the radioactive samples. And uh, what uh, uh, was, uh, for the first time, we were able to have the experimental maximum level cross-section, you can see that here in the yellow, you have the models, and this one is the experimental one. So there was a big difference between the, the okay, there was a difference between the, the models and the real data. Another important isotope that was measured, another branching point, was the nickel 63. This one is one of the seeds nuclei, just uh, in, the, in this region where uh, for uh, uh, the, the mass is mean, um, smaller than 90. And uh, so in this uh, uh, here, this uh, nickel 63 is the first branching point of the S process because you is branching because it, of course you can have that uh, the depending on the flux you can have that uh, one path or the, or, or the other and so you have that uh, during the helium core burning it the S process proceeds in this way and uh, during the carbon shell burning the process goes in this way. Another important thing is that for the this region for uh, the mass smaller than 90. Uh, the, um, the relation sigma n constant is not valid, so the local approximation is not valid. So uh, it is important to know very well the cross section because the, uh, the accuracy uh, of uh, one cross section influences the, the knowledge of the other, um, the, the, the other cross section. Well, also, here, just uh, okay, to give uh, an idea how difficult it is to have the samples, is uh, the, the, the sample of. Uh, um, the nickel 63 was obtained from, one, from the uh, nickel 60, 62 sample. It, it was irradiated in a, a thermal reactor uh, for a, a few years, and in the end, we obtained only 30% of the, the um, of the nickel 63. You have to take into account that it decays, and so there was also contamination from uh, by curio 63. And uh, in this case, it was possible to make the chemical separation and to obtain almost uh, uh, um, copper-free. Uh, copper-free uh, sample. 
but for many samples, okay, it's not so uh, it's not so easy. So in the end, we obtain these results, and also this one is the maximum the experimental maximum uh, average cross section that also in this case is different from the one that was in the in the models before. So it was the first high resolution measurement made uh, for this uh, sample. Another case important for the uh, for the um, astrophysics is the zirconium. Okay, the zirconium is a surrogate of the diamond, but is very important in astrophysics, and uh, it belongs to the first neutron magic. <coughs> uh, so the, the bottleneck for the S process, uh, uh, like we say we saw before, and uh, so we have just uh, um, it is important for the AGB star. So see here in the first phase well, during the, the the carbon phase. You have that the S process goes in this way, so the the, um, the 96 is completely skipped from the the, the production uh, the, the, um, from the neutron capture. In the Y, when you have the higher neutron flux, you have the uh, the production of 96. It's important to note that in the second phase of the pulses, so when you have this one is the you have so the first phase I, uh, uh, hydrogen, helium. So after when you have again hydrogen. The zirconium 96 is not reached by the S process, but is destroyed by the S process because it is there, so it captures some neutron. So, and after it is created again. So, the quantity cross section and the abundance of, of uh, uh, zirconium 96 is very important to constrain the, uh, the stellar model. And also, it's important because after uh, 1.5. Uh, mega here, you have that uh, the, the, the zirconium 93 decays, producing niobium 93, that is the only uh, stable isotope of the niobium. So, the importance is also okay, what was the, the, the situation? Uh, just in, in the past, there were many measurements during the 80s, sorry, there were many ma measurements of this uh, uh, isotope, and what was uh, uh, noticed was that uh, uh, zirconium 90, okay, here you have the, ab the solar abundances. And here you have the ratio between what you calculate, the abundance that you calculate with the, the cross-section, so the S abundances, uh, over the solar abundance. So it means that uh, the S process contributed to the 80% of the zirconium-90, while the zirconium-90 should be S-only isotope. And it, here, that the 96 that should be almost only air isotope because uh, it partially is skipped from the S process, and, when, uh, it's, uh, and so it is produced only during the neon phase, but after it's destroyed by the, uh, the hydrogen phase, the, the, the carbon phase that is much longer, you see that here the, the abundances due to the S process calculated with old cross section was higher than the, the one from the zirconium 90, which should, should be much smaller. Uh, the importance of the zirconium, okay, is all, all, also in the meteorites when you were to study them, and you see that the zirconium 96 is the one that uh, has bigger fluctuation because it gives us an indication of how many pulses there were, in the, the thermal pulses there were in the star and so on. So it's very, very important for the S process. And uh, the data that uh, were uh, uh, obtained in this measurement, was, uh, the measurement were done in TOF, were this one. So here is the, with the old um, cross-section that were used for the, the make the calculation we saw before. Uh, the, this part of 95 is missed because uh, the, uh, this uh, is a branching point with a very short life, uh, and so it is not easy to, to measure. So the only way that you have to, uh, to guess about this, uh, this um, maybe okay, your estimation about this cross-section is or using some model or using some uh, kind of uh, um, uh, calculation. So what we did in, an, uh, in the analysis was just to uh, consider the, the, um, all the, the, the maximum for the even isotope, so it was the uh, how they were vary in function of the, the neutron, uh, neutron number. This one is for the, uh, you see, so this behavior is just because it is a neutron magic. So here the cross section is very low because uh, uh, the, the neutron magic actually starts to increase and decrease. While if you go a little bit uh, far away from the uh, region of neutron magic, you have that the, the trend is uh, more, more linear. So we took the odds also, and uh, what we try to do is to you make a fit of these two uh, lines, and the only difference between the odd and the uh, and, uh, even isotope is the pairing effect. So in this way, you can have an estimation of the cross-section of the 95. So what you was calculated in this way was like 21 uh, millibar. And uh, uh, if you see, if you compare with models, you see it was not too far from this uh, uh, model uh, most. So 
with this new uh, value, we were to calculate again the, 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 relation, the, the ratio between the uh, S abundances and um, solar abundances, and you see that, okay, this zirconium uh, empty is much better, but finally you can see that zirconium empty is almost fixed, so the contribution uh, from this process is uh, 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 as it, it should be. So this one is the results are written in this, uh, uh, in this paper. Another, okay, uh, I'm still okay, no? Is it, as a time? So, you uh, have 15 minutes of Okay, so, um, uh, I will finish it earlier. So, it's uh, another uh, uh, important, uh, uh, so we said that there are some isolates that can give you uh, some information about the, um, the age of the universe. So, um, the Osmond is one of these uh, ice cube, and uh, so we, uh, with that we can know how old is uh, the, the universe. And uh, just okay, this, uh, the, the, the data are um, here in the, so the, 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 this was a measurement we published here, and just uh, to see how we can measure the age of the universe. One way is the cosmological way by the, the, the Hubble uh, time definition. The other one is the astronomical way based on the observ observation of globular cluster. Another way is the nuclear way that it is, it is based on the abundances and decay properties of the <coughs> long-life uh, species, radioactive, radioactive species. Uh, there are different um, uh, isotopes that can be used for this purpose, but uh, notice that the only one that is in the um, S path is, is uh, uh, so that, that with, uh, where the isotopes are smaller than the lead, because the S process goes from the iron to the lead, are these osmium and rain, and the other one can be used uh, they are in the, the in the um, are created by a process. So uh, the idea is that uh, just okay, but I have to, I, I thought there was another slide. Okay, here the idea is that we have this one are S only isotopes, and uh, this, uh, the uh, the renin is produced by R uh, by R process, and uh, it decays after 41 giga here. So if you know very well, the cross section of 186 and 187, you can estimate the contribution to 187 due to the decay. And from this contribution, you can calculate the age of the, <coughs> the, the universe. So the idea <coughs> is that you are in the local approximation. So we are here in this region where uh, n, uh, sigma n is constant. And you also that sigma 96. Per, for uh, times the abundance of 86 has to be equal to the cross section of 87 for the abundance of 87. So in this way, you can have that the contribution due to the decay of the renin can be calculated in this way. So what you need is that just to uh, you calculate the abundance from astronomical observation, and so and what you need to calculate is very well this cross section of 86, 87. This measurement was done also at Entoff, and this one is the cross section for the. Um, the maximum average cross section for the 86, and you see this difference was smaller than the previous uh, measurement. And this one is for the uh, nine, uh, for the 87. And in this case, is you have that the uh, cross section is a, the maximum average cross section is a bit bigger than the previous measurement. In this way, they were able to calculate the age of the universe, and it was given this way. The most important thing is the reduction of the, the error that. Um, now we have that, uh, that the cross section contributed to the zero, only 0 0.4 percent to the 0 0.4 giga year to the, 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 the total error, and uh, so you see that there is a still difference between all these uh, um, techniques, uh, 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 this way to calculate the uh, nuclear, uh, the, the age of the universe, and of course they should merge in some point, so they should be at least in the same range. And uh, okay, there can be some problem uh, for, for the other, but of course we know the problem. For the, our cross section is uh, that uh, a part of the the fortunes condition for the, the, the osmium, we have that there are many problems that like the, the, the beta decay half life of the region is strongly dependent on the temperature, and uh, the, 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 the stellar neutron uh, capture cross section of the osmium 87 is influenced by the the population of the low lying excited level, and also okay the branching of uh, the tungsten and rain can give also some uh, contribute to the, um, to the, the, the uh, to the complication of this measurement. And also the chemical evolution of the galaxy influenced the history of the nucleosynthesis, so uh, in this way also uh, the uncertainty of uranium and osmium. So I 
can conclude now. So we, I uh, think that I showed you how much is important to use the, 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 the cross section for, uh, for astrophysics. And uh, in the last 50 years, there was a big progress. There, there, there was a, a first part of a, the, the, just after that, uh, the 60s, there was a really uh, a big number of measurements that were uh, uh, made for uh, astrophysical purpose. After, there was a, after the 80s, there were no measurements. And now, recently, uh, thanks also to the NTOF facility, there, uh, the, this interest is renewed. And so there were many interests and uh, uh, many cross sections were calculated, also even uh, interesting uh, cross section like uh, the one I showed, a few of them I showed here, but still we need further progress, especially in the branching point where they are very difficult to, to measure. So it, it is, it is one is a challenge for the, for the future. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>